Rev up your engine! This is a 2011 Ram 4. It's got all wheel drive. As you can see when we crawl under, there's the front drive shafts. And as we check the back, you can see it's got drive shafts in the back too. Running the back wheels with a differential. Now personally, I only advise people to buy all wheel drive vehicles if they feel they really need them because they cost more. They get worse gas mods because there's more friction and they cost a lot more money to fix. Truth be told, this is a Toyota. We'll get in and check the old speedometer. See how many miles it's got on it? And it's got 118,291 miles on it. It's got a very complex computer system all wheel drive. And you can also lock it if you want. Now being a Toyota, 10 years old, the all wheel drive system has never been touched on this. And it still works perfectly fine. When they're made correctly like this Toyota and they're in somewhat smaller vehicles, it can last a really long time. The bigger, heavier vehicles, of course, there's more strain. You get a giant SUV tons of weight or a truck. The all wheel drive systems do wear out as they age. A lot of it's from pure weight and extra friction. As we check under the hood, now this has got a little bitty four cylinder engine, but it has dual VVTI, variable valve timing setup. It puts out 179 horsepower. It's plenty enough to move it around. It's not too much that it's gonna break down the all wheel drive system from too much power. Now this particular one, the engine is hooked up to a Toyota ASIN four-speed automatic transmission. Probably one of the most dependable transmissions Toyota ever made. Now this one still gets 20 miles per gallon in a city and 25 on a highway. It's an all-wheel drive compact SUV. They're never fantastic on gas mods. That's pretty much the average for vehicles this horsepower, this size with all wheel drive. Now you compare this to a two wheel drive one, you get a little bit better gas mods with just a two wheel drive system. It isn't all that much difference. And like I say, being a Toyota, it's a pretty dependable system. Like I say, this thing's had no work done on it at all. And it still works perfectly fine. 10 years later. Now it is all wheel drive, but you can see the clearance isn't insanely high. It's not an off-road vehicle, really. Even though it looks like it's had a little abuse over here. And it could certainly do with a bath. This baby's been ridden hard and put up wet. Guess what? It still runs perfectly fine. Now even though this RAV4 is 10 years old, has a hundred something thousand miles, it still has electrically assisted all wheel drive for some weird reason. Back in 2011, Toyota called it four-wheel drive, but it's really all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive system itself uses a transfer case that splits power between front and rear. So it's always running around in all-wheel drive. Technically, four-wheel drive systems, you can turn them on or off. But it does have one adaptation that I showed earlier. If you push the four-wheel drive lock button, it will lock power for 45% to the rear and 55% to the front. But once you reach 25 miles an hour, it shuts that off. That's just for getting out of tight spaces when it's snowy and stuff. Once it's 25, it goes back to the system where the computer controls it off. But that's good for getting out of mud spots, you're on ice or something, up to 25 miles an hour. When you're driving slow, because the road is a very dangerous place to be anyway, it makes it safer to drive only up to 25. But as I said, it's no off road vehicle but if you are stuck somewhere you can push that lock button and you'll have a much better chance of getting out of a bad situation this isn't an off-road jeep or a ford raptor you're gonna go boulder climbing with it that's not what it's for it's exactly what the rav4 is a family compact suv the wife and kids won't get stuck in the mud when it's really bad driving and they're going slow it won't slide all over the place when you're in ice or snow. It's a very handy feature, and like I say, this one still works perfectly fine. It hasn't been touched in 10 years. Now, if you'd bought one of these back in the day, you paid an additional $1,500 for the all-wheel drive system, and if you wanted a V6, you'd throw another $1,200 on top of that. Now, of course, the V6 is going to get much worse gas mods. And if you really don't need that kind of power in a smaller vehicle like this, the four cylinders are perfectly adequate. And since it's really an all-wheel drive system, driving it is just like driving any other thing. You start it up, and you just put it in gear. There's no special handles or anything. The only thing that changes anything is if you push the lock button, then up to 25, it'll be 45% power to the back and 55% to the front. And now when you push it, this cute little light will come on and telling you 
that you had that activated. Now back in the day, decades ago, if people said they wanted a reliable all-wheel drive vehicle, I'd say, well, you know, I'm not really happy with the Subaru Boxer engines and their automatic transmission, but Subaru does make very good all-wheel drive systems. This is a 10-year-old Toyota and it's all-wheel drive system just as good as far as I'm concerned for the average driver. Taking a family around, maybe getting a little snow, a little ice, or maybe you're going to your uncle's farm, he's got a dirt road, and you want enough clearance for the potholes, and you don't want to get stuck if it rains. They are excellent for that. There's no arguing that. But as I always say for people who live in a city like me, kind of overkill. Front-wheel drive is perfectly fine. Hey, my mother drives in Buffalo. She's got Toyota Corolla. It's just front-wheel drive. She doesn't get stuck in the snow. We never put snow no tires on the thing. A lot of times four wheel drive is overkill, but if you're one of those people that wants to have it, this Toyota system relatively bulletproof because they took the ultra reliable four speed Toyota automatic transmission and hooked it up to a all wheel drive system. So it does not just the front, but the back and is electronically controlled to get just the right percentage of front drive versus rear drive for whatever situation you're in. So in the case of this RAV4, start it up, put it in drive, away you go. The computer does all the work. Being a Toyota car, I've seen like four or five computers break in my entire life of working on Toyotas. And half of those were because the cars were flooded out. They're ultra reliable. You don't have to think about it. And best of all, there's very little maintenance. I mean, change the fluids every once in a while. That's pretty much it. Typical Toyota, push the button. Starts right up, and away we go. Now it's a high enough vehicle, not outrageously high, which some people like. They don't like them too high. And yeah, it's an old vehicle, it makes a lot of noise but it still goes. I got the AC on. You can barely feel it or hear it. It's smooth as can be. It handles pretty much like any compact SUV does. Now we'll check out the 179 horsepower. We'll come to a stop, then we'll give it full acceleration. Now yeah, they're not race cars. They're not meant to be, but you can see even with this mileage, it shifts perfectly fine. There's no jerking. And it goes fast enough that you want to go on one of these little things. It is a smaller vehicle, but you feel totally secure in it. You don't feel like it's going to tip over. You don't feel like you're in something that doesn't weigh anything. It's got a nice heft to it. Although it is kind of loud inside, but most of these compact SUVs are relatively loud, especially 10 year old ones. Now this particular one bounces around a little, still got the original struts on it, but really you get one, don't go out and start buying new parts for it because you don't like the way it rides. These things are relatively rough riding anyway. I've seen a lot of my customers, they'll say, put new struts on, and I warn them, but they say, put them on, I put them on, they say, gee, it doesn't really ride that much better. Then I just say, yeah, well, I warned you. Don't say I didn't tell you so. So now you know the truth about this Toyota RAV4 compact SUV with an all-wheel drive system and Toyota's four-speed automatic transmission. Pretty solid built vehicle if you're looking for small SUV that has all-wheel drive and you don't want to end up spending a bunch of money fixing it as it ages. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Motorcycle question. Person says, your opinion on Royal Enfield bullets. Royal Enfield was an English company a long time ago that made motorcycles when they were one and two cylinder motorcycles mainly. Then they got bought out, I believe in Pakistan, and they now make them. The bullets are their slower ones. They're kind of overpriced in the United States, I guess import tax and stuff. Now the interceptors are excellent. They're a two cylinder 650 cc. And those are nice bikes. They're a cheap twin cylinder, basically copy of Triumph BSA. They are only 49 horsepower, but they got enough torque that they're fun to drive around and they're pretty cheap. Those I kind of like. The bullets to me, they're too old tech. The ones I've seen were one cylinder and they don't get out of their own way. I never like one cylinder. I always had two cylinder English motorcycles or four cylinder Jap bikes that went like scolded apes. And they're too fast for me. And I went back to two cylinder Triumphs because they're totally reliable, the new ones because the new Triumphs, they're made in Thailand. They're not made in England. <laughs> and the Thais make them better than the English ever did. Mark Westrick says, Scotty, I have several JDM type cars. 90 Nissan Pulsar GTR, 91 Toyota Soar with 1JZ. I was wondering if you'd be interested in commenting on the build quality and values of their vehicles. Yeah, they're, you know, guys that like them a little more speed. They do an excellent job. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Now, you don't want to overpay. I mean, you're talking about some old stuff there. You know, you're talking about a 30-year-old Nissan on and a 29 year old Toyota. They are only going to last so long and when they're souped up like that a lot of times the guys really beat the heck out of them. 
But if they've been taken care of and rebuilt, a lot of guys rebuild them and pump them up. So actually, they're better than they were when they knew, especially if they did the engines and transmissions over. So if they got any kind of paperwork for that, they can be really fun things to drive around. It's basically a cheap, fast little cars. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.